Welcome back to the show. We are with today's guest, Senator Vince Palestina, New Jersey, Legislative District 2. Senator, so we were talking about the boardwalk, uh, one of the great pleasures I had. Uh, been in Atlantic City full time now, about 15 years living on the boardwalk or by the boardwalk. Uh, was that, I want to say about 2018, the North End got completed, uh, beautiful jetties. And one of the things that I started seeing more than people just riding bike and whatnot, families out there, you know, the jetties, fishing, that sort. Touch on that a little bit as well, please. Yeah, it's fabulous. Just a, a huge part of the future for Atlantic City, obviously. When you see the redevelopment of the boardwalk, redevelopment of that whole area and creating opportunity for families to be out there, you know, the miniature golf place, right. now the showboat's kind of up in that end with Lucky Snake and all that stuff. And there's so much more to do up there now. And, you know, some fabulous areas for redevelopment, some blighted areas there that can be redeveloped, some vacant areas. That really presents such a tremendous opportunity, whether it's, you know, some residential redevelopment, some of the amenities for families like we see there. I think you're going to see some great things at the north end of the city of Atlantic City coming soon. So it's a great area and anything we can do to create more of a family atmosphere and more activity is good for the entire city. Yeah, love it. And as you said, to piggyback and not to repeat, but whether it's North Beach Mini Golf, again, um, uh, AC Hot Bagels, even to go with that, just seeing some of these businesses and what they've done over at the uh, Showboat Hotel Resort, now they're calling it, yeah. you know, with the, like you said, Island Water Park, $100 million plus, 100,000 square feet, uh, Lucky Snake claiming the largest in the world, you know, and it, it is beachfront. Families coming in, again, we're touching on it. It's so important. We love our casinos. Uh, the food, the employee, the amount of employees they employ, the shows, and, and that's where, but again, diversification. I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, I don't think Atlantic City is ever going to be family, 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 all right? Three families there. But it's, you know, needs to uh, make that swing, that pendulum. Definitely does, and we've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, the gaming, we've done very, very well with gaming and tourism. It's been, you know, a great thing for, obviously, our region. But there's so much gaming competition now. Right. You know, you're not. You'll see some expansion. You'll see some reinvestment into the properties to, you know, expand gaming opportunities. But you're not going to see a whole lot of new hotels at this point. We need to diversify and we need to create opportunities for families. And I think when you think of that, you know, the North Beach area, and then you think about Gardner's Basin. If mm. you go a little bit to the west, um, just fabulous opportunities. That entire north end of the city with great views. You know, great sunsets if you're going yeah. looking out the other way, and it's just going to be something that is going to be tremendous for the entire region. So, right. I really think that's going to be very important going forward. You know, the, just the um, ability to bring more people here that are not just focused on gaming, but are focused on other things outside of gaming. Right. Guys, you know, guys can go play and play blackjack, and right. and then there's <laughs> stuff for everyone else to do. to do. Yeah. yeah, and you know, great sunrises as well. And I know you know that. Sit on the stoop out there many, many, many mornings, and just check it out. Get the head right and whatnot. Listen, diversification, you were just touching it. It does a diversification, Atlantic County economy. So, I mean, jump in just, it. That is, uh, you know, it's really been our focus over the first two years. Mike, uh, in addition to getting to a lot of these people in place um, to improve law and order with the prosecutor. But really, it's been about, you know, my kids are now 18 and 17. I have twins that are 17, so I have three kids that are, you know, one is now a freshman in college, two are juniors in high school. And I was looking at this and saying, you know, we need more opportunities for them. I want them to be able to come back here and I want them to be able to start their families here and start their careers here. And so that was really what I have focused on. And I think you look at four main components that we have been focused on over the first two years here. Obviously tourism, you know, we're never gonna forget the tourism industry and the gaming industry, so critical to the region. We're gonna keep making the investments into the boardwalk and into the industry. We have some critical pieces of legislation we have to deal with, you know, over the next couple of years with the tourism, uh, um, district, uh, the pilot, you know, the, the takeover, quote unquote, or partnership, whatever you want to call it, and then the internet gaming where, you know, we were going to get a 10-year extension of internet gaming. They tried to take it to two. We got it back to five, but five isn't enough. If people are going to make investments and improvements in their property, we need a longer horizon of five years. And so we have some key things that we have to do for the tourism industry, over, you know, when we get back to Trenton. But then beyond gaming, you know, we talked about some of these kind of key components. Stockton University, when you think about, you know, the southern end of the island and the development of Stockton University, uh, just has transformed that southern end of the island. When you go in along Albany Boulevard, and there's another lot there for development um, that is going to be a key part of the future that we're going to talk about what is best to go there. And Stockton is currently 
you know, going out to an RFP to get somebody engaged to try to figure out what will be best uh, for that future development. But when you think about the Stockton campus here, Stockton and Atlantic City, uh, really important to our growth as a region to make the investments into Stockton to create more opportunities for kids to get educated here, um, but then to have opportunities after they get educated if they want to stay here. It's a great area, as you know. Right. To, to live, work, play, as you say all the time. And so Stockton is really key to what we have uh, been trying to do. And we got the most record money in history of Stockton in this last budget. Uh, Atlantic Care, you know, another huge anchor for the region. Again, uh, campus in Atlantic City, campus in Galloway, similar to, similar to Stockton. And so the other thing we did was get the redistricting done. So Galloway and Atlantic City are both in Legislative District 2, which is going to be key. Because when you think about Stockton having campuses in both areas, Atlantic Care having campuses in both areas, it's natural for Galloway to be back in Legislative District 2 when they are this year. So, But Atlantic Care, we just, through the last state budget, got a $10 million investment for some of the construction right here at the campus in Galloway, which they are expanding and um, creating opportunities for suites. After they dealt with the pandemic, they recognized they didn't have enough individual rooms for people. You know, the pandemic was tremendously challenging from a healthcare perspective. So they're embarking on an $87 million expansion here in Galloway, which we were able to get them some funding for uh, to really create a situation where, you know, you have suites, you have individual rooms. If we ever have to deal with another pandemic, they'll be in a position to be able to do that. But the, you also have the trauma center in Atlantic City, you know, a fabulous institution right here in our area uh, that we are able to work with and invest in and hopefully uh, put them in a better position to be a bigger part of the future. So tourism, Stockton, Atlantic Care with, from a healthcare perspective, and then the aviation we talked about, aviation, you know, the airport, the aviation district area uh, is going to be really the fourth pillar. And so I think we're going to be able to create an opportunity where you can get educated here, have opportunities here. Stockton actually has that live, work, learn program where you can live right on campus in AC and you can work at either one of the casinos or Spencer Gifts or one of these other you know, entities. You can stay right here and hopefully we're um, creating opportunities long term for people to be able to live here. You know, the kids get a, uh, we, we get, we knock them a little bit now. You know, I guess as you get older, you're, ah, it's not the same. But you know what, I give them a lot of credit for anybody to be able to get a degree living on the boardwalk having that beach right there and everything that we have around us. I give, you know, it takes a lot to do, but moving forward. But the, my point in bringing that up, uh, live on the, uh, the down beach side of Atlantic City, being able to wake up each day, whether it's uh, uh, getting a coffee, bike ride, or whatever it may be, Stockton University, the university district, seeing the signs on the, uh, the poles, seeing the students, again, just walking across the street, it has totally, totally, 100%, I know you touched on it, change that and I don't think some people realize that when they come in because I know a few of my friends I bring in for a show or whatnot we go to a, a dinner they're like what is that I mean but that is so important to make that area uh, friendly for the families and the students and whatnot and the residents as well absolutely and that's really has been key and you know, that's one of the key ways you get the city turned around is you have more activity out on the streets from students from people that are patronizing the facilities and we want to do more with that area so Fabulous now, you know, totally transformed that southern end. But we want to do more from a retail perspective. You know, the Lot 21 development, actually get more activity and really focus on how do we get residential redevelopment, you know, specifically along the beach. It is amazing to me that you have some of those areas with parking lots and other facilities that are just kind of sitting there when you could have beachfront property. And once you get people living there, that take pride in their homes and you know their home ownership, you're gonna have more activity and, and more of a sense of community and more you know, help from a public safety perspective just simply because you have more people out on the streets you know, walking around and being seen. And to your point right there with some of the businesses that just come into town, Down Beach by Stockton University, the Good Dog AC, Rife, uh, a few uh, bodegas and Boom Market expanding their uh, supermarket out there. But again, so important. And Atlantic Care, you touched on a little bit. That addition, too, a, a huge addition. I know we're out here in Galloway as well, but will there be any more Atlantic Care, do you think, in the city? Or and absolutely. just touch on that new one? Yeah, absolutely. So the one in Galloway is underway, and I, they have some property right next to them. I think CRDA owns part of the property. There's some private ownership. And a couple of the other lots, but they are absolutely going to be looking at future development. 
development in Atlantic City and expansion. They need to, they're going to look to expand as well, you know, create more opportunities for people here. I think Michael Charlton, you know, congratulate him on becoming the CEO of Atlantic Care. Local guy like you and me, been here for a long time, you know, different industry, but, you know, another local guy who knows the people here, has had relationships here, now the CEO of Atlantic Care, and I think that is going to portend for great things in the future. Uh, because they are going to look to expand. It's not something that, you know, necessarily has done in the past, but now they are really going to focus on that, and that's going to be great for the area. I just recently had him on the radio show, Michael Charlton, uh, the new head man over there at Atlantic Care, and he spoke about what the importance of that building and here as well in Galloway, but also community, community, community. And talking about community, uh, just to pivot a little bit here, Anchor, let's talk about some of the stuff that we can do uh, for, you know, reaching out to your office. Uh, that Anchor program, I mean, huge. I think people were surprised when they started seeing what was happening to their checking accounts and uh, what they got in the mail. Yeah, that's one of the, we always want to get the word out, Mike, and we thank you for any opportunity to go on the radio, go on the TV program, to just try to get the word out. First, I mean, our office is your office, you know, all the taxpayers' office. You pay for the office. We have staff in the office, and I have said to everybody, if you need help with anything, you know, it can be a state issue, it can be a local issue, it can be a county issue, you know, DMV, federal, we'll go to Congressman Van Drew and get assistance if we need. Anyone who needs any assistance with any topic, we're either able to help you in our legislative office or we will get you positioned and pointed in the right direction to get assistance. So anybody out there who's struggling, challenged, needs some help, feel free to reach out to our office. Anchor specifically, you know, you and I have talked, property taxes, biggest impediment, you know, we have in New Jersey, whether you are somebody who wants to start a career here, you know, you want to remain in your home or you want to retire here, we have got to get the property tax situation under control. First step, I think, was Anchor, which Anchor gives you up to $1,500 if you're a homeowner, up to $450 if you're a renter, up to certain income thresholds. We didn't see everybody take advantage of it. So we only saw last year 50 or 60% of the state population in New Jersey use it. So we're trying to get the word out. It's, uh, the program has been re-upped with this current budget. The money is there. It's your money. You know, you're paid your property taxes. It's your money. We want to assist you getting your money back, at least a portion of it. So, you know, anybody who has got any questions about these property tax rebate programs, we're trying to access the anchor program, call our office. We absolutely will get you the help you need on that. Make sure, you know, you get the $1,500 or the $450 directly into your bank account. And we're about out of time, but I want to say thank you for putting that out there. Because a lot of folks, they do. They spin their wheels. They don't know where to go or what to do or nobody's going to answer. But I've uh, personally seen what you and folks, uh, Claire and Don and some of the others do. You know, if you can't find, if I don't know a guy, I know a guy, right? I mean, and you can help the folks out here, and it's very important. And I don't know too many people who don't need uh, $1,400 or whether it's four fifty dollars or whatnot. So, folks, I, I encourage you to make sure you reach out to his office. Listen, I want to thank you for coming on on out and uh, just taking the time. I mean, no, it's a busy time for you at this time uh, in October, the craziness that goes on during election time and campaigning. We appreciate what you do and Claire and Don and all the others because I believe that anyone who puts their self out there like a book, you know, uh, it, it, you deserve a lot. I think you're crazy, but I think you're good crazy because we are blessed here in Atlanta County, and I mean that when I say that, Senator. Last word to you. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate that. I mean, we got into this just to help people, and so really uh, happy we're in a position to try to help people because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So this is crazy time. Nobody likes this time. You know, we, we can't wait for this to be over, but, you know, we're doing it for a reason. We're doing it for a purpose, and the purpose is to really make uh, investments, improvements into our community, into our region, and uh, help people who need help. And so, again, thank everybody for giving me the opportunity. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully I'm still there after this uh, election, but we'll see what happens. Senator Vince, I want to thank you again for coming out. Appreciate you jumping into the campus. Thanks again to Senator Vince Palestina for taking the time to be today's guest. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 